It's The old man longed for children, but he had his young wife had none, so he invited his nephew to live with them. This infuriated his wife, who had a vile temper. When her husband welcomed the young man with great affection, she turned pale and jealousy. Her eyes narrowed and her head flattened, and when she licked her lips, her nephew saw that her tongue was fart. <laughs> From that day on, the young man spent as much time as possible with his uncle and tried to avoid his aunt, but she seemed to enjoy startling him, suddenly appearing when he least expected her. One evening, the nephew returned to the house quite late. He lit a candle and started up the stairs. Halfway up... He tripped on what seemed to be coiled rope. Imagine his horror when the rope uncoiled and slithered up the steps in front of him. Then he saw it glide across the hall and under the door in his, of his uncle's bedroom. Wake up! Wake up! The young man shouted, and he knocked on the door until his knuckles hurt. But when his sleepy uncle finally let him in the bedroom, there was no snake in sight. His aunt seemed to be sleeping. So the young man whispered in his uncle's ear, I saw, I saw a snake. But his uncle was too groggy to respond. He slid back under the covers. The young man searched the room quickly, looking into drawers and cupboards and corners. He peered under the bed and behind the chairs. He was beginning to think he was going mad when suddenly his aunt sat up in bed and narrowed her eyes and gave him an evil look that made his flesh creep. I'm sorry to bother you, he cried, racing to his bedroom and firmly shutting the door. When he awoke the next morning, he noticed that the bottom of his bedroom door was arched up to the center, leaving just enough space for a snake to slither through. He bolted out of the bed trembling. When he went downstairs, he was shocked to see that every door in the house had a snake-sized arch beneath it. His aunt was sitting on the table eating. Your uncle left for the day, she said, licking her lips with her forked tongue. The young man was too terrified to speak, but his silence only made matters worse. I don't like the way you treat me, she said, and grabbed his arm. Then she pressed her fingernails so deeply into his skin that he felt as if he were being bitten. He rushed outdoors and saw his arm was swelling. His hand and fingers were beginning to throb. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. He knew he must seek help, so he ran into the forest to find the wise old hermit who lived there. The man examined him carefully and handed him some leaves. These are best for a snake bite, he said. Find them around your arm and keep them wet. Those marks were made by my aunt's fingernail. The old hermit shook his head in despair. The touch of a snake woman, mm, even worse, he said. But try those leaves, they should help. The young man appalled. Is my aunt really a snake woman? He asked. If you really want to find out, the hermit replied, stay awake tonight and if a snake enters your room, cut off the tip of its tail. The young man wasn't sure how this would help. But he thanked the hermit for his advice and returned to his uncle's house. By afternoon, he was happy to see that the wet leaves had reduced the swelling. 
He watched his aunt closely that evening, but he didn't notice anything strange until she tasted her soup. She said it needed more seasoning and lingered on the S as if it were hissy. Her nephew felt goose flesh rise from the tips of his toes to the top of his head. He excused himself from the table and went up to his bedroom, but not to sleep. He planned to watch for the snake all night long. There was just enough moonlight for him to see the bottom of his door, so he blew out his candle and unsheathed his, unsheathed his sword. Then he stood waiting. He watched for hours, wondering what the snake might do. What if it slithered through the window instead, crept behind him, struck him with his venomous fangs? What if it slithered to the top of the wardrobe and dropped down on him from above? He was thinking of fleeing for his life. Then he finally saw the snake glide under the door, first its head, then its body, then its tail. Slash! He swung his sword so quickly that the snake had no warning, and the tip of its tail began writhing all by itself there on the floor. The snake raised its head as if, as if to strike, but then it hissed vi viciously and slithered out of the room. And when he looked down the hall, he saw it disappear under his uncle's door. The young man couldn't stand looking at quivering at the quivering tail, so he scooped it up with his sword and flung it in a drawer. He hardly slept at all that night. When he did, snakes chased him through his dreams. The next morning, he opened the drawer to cr draw a crack to look at the snake's tail. He was amazed to see that it had turned into human toes. He raced back to the forest to tell the hermit what had happened. And now my aunt is staying in my bed. But do you know what my uncle said? She told him she heard her foot while sleepwalking. Either, either she will fear you now, said the old man, or she will try to get rid of you. Listen carefully. If you think you are in danger, you must search her bedroom for the snake's skin. When you find it, burn it. The young, young man thanked the hermit, but he was concerned. What would happen if he burned the snake skin? He decided to give his aunt one last chance. While she was recovering, he caused no trouble, but as soon as her wound healed, she resumed her nightly slithering about the, about the house. Sometimes... When the young man was lying in bed, he saw the snake slip in and out of his empty boots or up the sleeve of his coat he had worn. One dreadful night, he felt the snake wiggling under his pillow. He jumped out of bed in a cold sweat. His dreams grew worse. He had a terrifying nightmare in which his aunt was trying to choke him. He awoke gasping for breath and realized that something was coiled tightly around his neck. It was the snake. He pulled it off and threw it across the room and after he caught his breath he knew he had to follow the hermit's advice. The next day his aunt said her back was sore but this didn't keep her from going for a walk with his uncle, as soon as they left the house, the young man slipped into their bedroom to look for the snakeskin, but he couldn't find it. He was about to give up when he noticed dusty footprints on a chair. He stepped up on the seat and looked at the top of the wardrobe. There, neatly coiled, lay the shiny snakeskin. But just as he picked it up, he heard the door open downstairs. And he knew that his aunt and uncle were home. He rolled up the snakeskin tightly and hid it in his fist before he raced back to his room. And that's when he heard hideously sounds coming from the lower hall. His aunt was shrieking. Something is crushing me! Ah! When her nephew heard her cross, 
he almost lost his resolve. But then he remembered how he felt when the snake wrapped itself around his neck and tried to choke him. He threw the snake skin into the fire and watched it burn. By the time he went downstairs, he was startled to see his aunt lying dead on the floor. He thought he was getting rid of the snake, but now his aunt was gone too. I'm sorry, he said to his uncle. But the old man seemed relieved. It's only the poisonous ones who are dangerous he said as he licked his lips happy halloween